Good day and welcome to another episode of your program, Infrastructure Weekly, where we X-ray the achievement of the Muhammadu Buhari-led administration in bridging the nation's infrastructure deficit and ensuring the completion of long-abandoned projects in all sectors across Nigeria. I am your uncle, Aposedi Omowui. We will be back after this time out. Don't go away. Coming together this is what infrastructure is the backbone of development, which explains the Buhari government's efforts at bridging the facility gap. Infrastructure Weekly is a television package designed to bring you latest information on hundreds of development projects going on in various sectors all over the nation. There is no state in Nigeria today where you will not see our contractors busy at work. Power generation, rural electrification, road rehabilitations, national housing scheme, construction of roads and rail lines across the country, you name it. We are now able to produce 7,000 megawatts of power. That is no longer debatable. Infrastructure Weekly is Nigerians working together for a better Nigeria. So be better informed to take better informed decisions. Watch Infrastructure Weekly, showing on channels television, Thursdays 2.30 p.m., NTA Network Wednesdays 5 p.m., and Core TV News Fridays at 8 p.m. Infrastructure Weekly, making development known. Welcome back. The federal government has reiterated its determination to ensure the completion of all projects with steady and adequate funding at all times. Minister of State for Power, Works and Housing, Suleiman Zarama, disclosed this while on an inspection tour of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway and other projects in Lagos State. The minister said the scope of work on the road, which was recently expanded, has necessitated the extension of the time the project will be delivered. Let's take a listen. The minister, who was on a three-day visit to Lagos State to inspect projects under the ministry, says the Lagos Abad Expressway is a fundamental project that is a link to most parts of the country. He added that the federal government is irrevocably committed to the completion of the road in good time and to specifications. According to the minister, the emergence of new communities along the road necessitated the expansion of the initial scope of work to accommodate them. The designs will have to be reviewed to um, take in these other new um, uh, events that are coming up along the corridor of our road. There may be new businesses coming up along this corridor because the road has been expanded. There may be need also to expand. So in a road project of this nature, continuously you will be reviewing and upgrading. On the issue of funding for projects, the minister says the federal government has made consistent and conscious efforts through various means to ensure that funding is maintained for all projects to drive them to completion. He said the time for the completion of the project is now extended by another 48 months due to the additional works to accommodate new segments along the corridor. He had consistently made budgetary provisions. We have consistently been paying contractors. So we, if there is one thing that the president has as a collateral is his integrity. And I think every member of cabinet of this government is willing to make sure that that collateral of the president is upheld. So we make solid commitment that all contractors working for us we will be paid as we go along. For his part, the control of works Lagos at Deda Molakuti, the project is proceeding according to plan. He gave the update on both sections of the road while also assuring the minister that the monitoring team put together will ensure strict adherence to quality and specification. The organization came up as a result of the additional works that were added to this project. But when the original structure was conceived, so many other things were not put into consideration, like uh, a lot of structures and infrastructures already existing on the, on the road. So additional works include underpasses, pedestrian bridges, and uh, 
construction of flyovers, toll gate, toll plazas, and the rest of it. He said the substantial work in the project will be completed by the end of the year, leaving only the additional works in some parts of the initial project, which had been augmented. He says works had been completed on the four kilometers purple long bridge on the road. If you were just joining us, the program is Infrastructure Weekly, and I am your uncle, Abosede Omowi. For comments, feedback and inquiries, you can get in touch with us on Twitter at Infra underscore weekly and on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Infrastructure Weekly. The construction of the Ekpoma Auchi Okene Lokoja Road was flagged up by the former Minister of Works, Mike Onole Meme, was so much fanfare. But the project was later abandoned due to non-funding with the attendant hardship on users of the road, which connects Edo State to both Kogi State and the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. Since the advent of the Muhammadu Buhari administration, the road has been getting the required attention, with funding now provided for the contractor and the re-engagement of workers who had hit her to lead off. Users of the road in Benin City, the Edo State capital, have commended the federal government for the return to site of contractors and ongoing work which they say is of high standard. The Benin Lokoja Road, started under the tenure of former Works Minister Mike Onole Menem, was abandoned due to lack of funding, but work has since commenced following the release of funds by the Buhari administration. For the motorists who use the road, the decision is a welcome development. I want to say that in the last one year, a you know, couple of months and one year, the development of that road has really improved. And I can say that for now, it's very safe to drive on Bini, uh, access to Auchi, uh, which is made up of uh, phase one. I also know that work has commenced because the last time I traveled to Abuja, I know that work has commenced from Lokoja end to, to meet up with the uh, Okene Auchi side. So I want to give kudos to the federal government for living up to their billings. To their, you know, they promised they will fix the road, and by the grace of God, they are fixing the road. But now, now, we appreciate. They are trying, but the government is they never finish the work. We still appreciate. For others, the federal government should be commended for its decision to resume construction of the road, which had claimed several prominent Nigerians, including late Professor Iyai, a renowned activist for workers' rights in the universities. They, however, called for the completion of the road on time to avert further road crashes while also calling for the contractors to expedite work on some bad portions of the road, especially within Ekbuma and Auchi. They've done all, but they've tried, the government have tried, because the road is improvement now between this short period to the last year or last two years. So there's a great improvement. Let them continue that way. We will be right back after this break to take a detour into the provision of infrastructure to tackle the perennial erosion problem in Oshobo, the Oshun state capital, and also the Lagos Ibadan rail line project. London, New York or Lagos, business or holiday, home or office, you can now carry out your tax transactions from anywhere in the world. You can now file all your tax returns, pay online, get a receipt and even process your tax clearance certificate from anywhere in the world online and in real time. All you need to do is log on to www.firs.gov.ng and click on e-services and be introduced to the world of innovation, convenience and transparency from the FIRS. You can also pay stamp duty as you register a new company with the CAC or for other transactions that request time duty payment online. You can also file your withholding tax returns and determine the withholding tax deducted from you is in government covers so that you can get your receipt within 45 days as long as the deduction has been remitted. Yes, all of this and more online at www.firs.gov.ng slash e-services. FIRS, making tax administration as easy as ABC. Please note that all FIRS services are free of charge. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. It pays to pay your tax. 
Welcome back. Can you send your comment, observation and feedback to the social media handles showing on your screen? For the people of Oshobo, the perennial flooding occasioned by the non-channelization of the flood water anytime the rainy season start has been one they have lived with for some time until it got the required attention from the federal government. Minister of Information, Culture and Tourism, Lai Mohammed, who represented President Muhammad Buhari in handing over the projects to the state government, said it is a reaffirmation of the commitment of governments to providing the needed infrastructure for people to be able to go about their day-to-day -day activities and to thrive. Before now, inhabitants of these communities in Oshogo have had to live in danger caused by flooding, recording loss of lives and properties as a result of silting of the stream. For them, on this memorable occasion of the commissioning and handing over ceremony of the laudable project of channelization, desilting, and development of Okoko and Ogbagba River phases one and two in Oshobo town in Oshu state, executed by the federal government through the Ecological Fund Office for the benefit of the teeming population of Oshobo town and its environs, it is an end to the many a loss they have had to experience. But with the combined efforts of the state government and the intervention of the federal government through the Office of the Secretary to the government of the Federation using ecological funds, today the waterways have been desilted by building channels with bridges. The project, according to the Minister of Information, Culture and Tourism, was approved by President Muhammad Buhari in October 2016. The phase one of the, these triple projects, which is the channelization and the, the silting of Obagba and Okoko rivers in Oshobu town, was one of the 12 fourth quarter 26, 2016 ecological intervention projects across the six geopolitical zones of the Federation, approved by the President in October 2016. The phase two consisted the flood control and setting of the Obagba River on one hand and the erosion control neutralization of the Okoku River on the other were among the 18 ecological intervention projects approved by Mr. President for the first quarter 2017. Due to prevailing circumstances, the contracts for phases one and two were awarded to the same contractor almost at the same time in order to ensure continuity and uniformity of standards in the project implementation. Representative of the Ecological Fund's office, Yusuf Adi, says the risk of flood and silting and the negative effect consequences necessitated the prompt intervention by the federal government. The risk of flooding and silting, as well as its negative consequences, necessitated the prompt intervention of the federal government in effecting a holistic channelization and desilting of the rivers that would stand the test of time and address the issues of floods and erosion caused by infrastructural decay over the years. It is our conviction that this intervention project will provide succor to the communities whose lives and properties were hitherto in danger. I am glad to inform this August gathering that the EFO entrenched a new tradition of organizing a collaboration with the host community, a befitting ceremony for the commissioning and handing over of its projects. This singular act will serve a dual purpose of taking ownership of the projects and ensuring its sustainability. I have no doubt that the local government authorities and indeed the state, as well as inhabitants, will ensure that the drainage system is not turned into a refuse dump. No doubt the Muhammad Buhari-led administration is committed to ensuring that the citizenry have access to infrastructure and with various projects like this ongoing, this is bound to attract the kind of investment that will trigger growth in critical sectors like agriculture, solid minerals and tourism, thus moving the economy from oil. Let me stress that 
the problems of erosion and flood menace along the Okoko and Obagwa rivers cannot be overemphasized in view of the of their obvious negative consequences on life and property in Mexico Town. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I have no doubt in my mind that the successful completion of these projects would enhance the holistic solutions of soil erosion and flood menace in Shogo Town. This would at the same time reduce the dangers to life and property associated with erosion and persistent flooding that have been experienced here in recent times. The governance is about the people. The federal government is keenly aware of this, hence the ongoing massive investments across the country in projects that are of direct benefit to the citizens, including roads, rail, power, and other infrastructural programs. The intervention of the federal government in this erosion and flood control project, Noshepotanshi, will go a long way in promoting social economic development and enhancing the well-being of the citizens of the country. It will impact directly on lives and property in the township and in the end, improve the lives of the residents. Applauding the President, Governor of Oshun State, Rauf Aregbeshola, was also quick to giving a stern warning to the beneficiaries to manage the channels by not throwing refuse and dirt there, adding that a committee has been set up to engage women farmers to plant vegetables and make a living. What we have seen here has come at a huge cost to the two governments, federal and state. Therefore, to free money for other interventions, because rather than having to do this either annually or periodically, depending on the time frame you are considering, it's best for us to relate to this and manage it properly by ourselves. We will do the needful to check abuses, but let me speak about abuses that can come from the community. As much as they appreciate this, they may ignorantly be enjoying themselves by doing things that will make this very, very useless in due course and dysfunctional. What are those abuses? Please, for goodness sake, refrain from throwing refuse and that into this channel. This channel is not meant as a refuse collector. Agent Soyova, Taba feki kini yosko ko wulo funwa. Fo jo kupe kula lo pe. Ema da ido tisi nwe. Ema da pan tisi nwe. Ko un she yi le ido ti. Taba ti yi da ido tisi nwe. Ta lo pe yon dwa o do bwe lo bi konkon. I nwe lo ma wwa. Ade ma dinon ni. Abra da o konkonon ni. Ada o koko ti o dodo, ti o dosa, ti o doku. Olo o de, ni jeke o koko o dosa. Abe enfo, abe enfo sa lo jopo. The federal government will continue to execute projects that will benefit the people across the six geopolitical zones in the country. And this has been attested by the ongoing massive infrastructural projects being carried out across the country. Between 2016 and today, the Buhari administration has spent over 1.3 trillion naira on infrastructural projects. For comments, questions and feedback, you can get in touch with us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash infrastructure weekly and on Twitter at infra underscore weekly. Join us after this break for a look at the past sector. Don't go away.
just joining us, the program is Infrastructure Weekly, where we present to you the infrastructure agenda of the Buhari administration. For comments, inquiries and feedback, do get in touch with us on the social media handles showing on your screen. Investments by the federal government aimed at expanding the transmission part of the past sector value chain has continued apace with a plan by the federal government in collaboration with the Economic Community of West African State ECOWAS Group to create an energy highway within the sub-region with control centers in Ikeja, Lagos and Cotonou in Benin Republic. Excess electricity generated cannot be stored if not evacuated for use by the respective consumers. This reality makes the international sales of electricity attractive as the energy which would have been wasted as supplied to countries with needs who pay for same. This is why Nigeria is selling electricity to some countries in the sub-region so that money realized from such ventures are directed to generate more electricity and fund other sectors of the economy, like provision of roads and health centers. The idea that people are thinking that, oh, if you sell electricity to Niger, as if you are giving them charity, that's not correct. You understand? It's business. It's business that you bring foreign exchange that will expand those generators, generation companies, that will expand the transmission companies, which will give more job to Nigerians. 2019 is the target year to achieve interconnection of electricity supply, as Benin Republic will host the International Coordinating Center in Cotonou, with a backup center to be located in Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria. We will come, up, come at the state level so that the head of state may take a decision and say, 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 tell the, the, the states to put in place some uh, guarantees to secure the, uh, the, the, the trade. And this, this will allow everybody, everybody participating in, the, in this trade to be uh, uh, comfortable. When you are selling, you will be paid. And when you are buying, you will pay. And this is really what we are working on. on and uh, I can say that this is a point we need to solve uh, in order to have a very strong market. We'll be happy to, to sell it to somebody that is in the need. It, it, it will help your uh, electricity economy because uh, it will help uh, linking, uh, connecting the money you will you will give, you will have, can help to to to, to connect the, the, the people. Meanwhile, the ECOWAS Regional Electricity Regulatory Authority and West African Power Pool have agreed with the ECOWAS Commission to officially launch the regional electricity market later in the month of June this year. This market will operate open access to transmission and distribution networks by third parties and eligible customers, as well as encourage the willing of more power to consumers. Now to the National Housing Program in Cross River State and an update of the current status of work on site and how it is creating employment for young Nigerians. Citizens and suppliers at the National Housing Sites in Cross River and Aquaibum State are getting more empowered through the Affordable Housing Program aimed at providing affordable houses for Nigerians across all social strata. With adequate funding of the projects by the Mohammed Buhari administration, Job opportunities are springing up in various aspects of constructions and many citizens are benefiting from the building works. Some of those who are tapping into this opportunity created by this program in an interview with Infrastructure Weekly says federal government is activating various latent business areas for the common man. He had, he had helped me so much. I supply so stone and chip and sand. It makes me develop my business over there at home. My small supply at home there. Made me develop more. Obong Aaron, who is one of the laborers, says before now he had nothing doing, however, following the activities around the area, makes a daily income from which is building his own house and caring for his family. Yeah, I build small uh, bungalow house in my village. With this project? From this project? Yes. Wonderful. Yes, a two bedroom flat. In which, in which uh, town? In Akwaibu State. In uh, State? Yes. The National Housing Program has been handled by various contractors, 
This visit by the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing is to monitor the progress of the project in Calabar in Cross River State. The project on this axis involves the construction of houses, roads, drains and electricity supply with 500 kVA transformers to provide a comfortable estate for human habitation as the government fulfills its promise of change which comes gradually across the country. The project as provided by the federal government is the purpose is basically to reduce, uh, to provide houses for the people of Nigeria. Particularly that this is cited in Cross River State to alleviate the housing problem. Um, the project comprises of uh, the condominium, which is a high rise that has a uh, house about 24 housing units of uh, one bedroom flat, three bedroom flat, and two bedroom flat. Then we also have the two bedroom flat, semi detached which we have about 32 house, 32 flats. Then we also have a three-bedroom flat housing unit, which will have about 16 flats. In a, a project like this that the government deem it right to be cited in a particular place, at least it's a development, and I'll give kudos to the federal government for that. That is all for this week. Thanks so much for staying with us. Be a patriotic citizen by paying your tax. Let's continue the conversation on social media on the handles showing on your screen. I am Abosedi Omowi. Bye for now.